right, welcome back to another one of our film reviews. Today we are breaking down Brown's rookie tackle, Dewan Jones, and his performance against the Pittsburgh Steelers. This was one of the more incredible performances that we've seen all season long from any offensive lineman, veteran, or rookie. We'll show exactly why today. If you appreciate this kind of content, give us a like. Give us any comments with any feedback you might have. But without further ado, let's jump into the film. All right, so for those of you who aren't aware, Dewan Jones, who there he is lined up right tackle on the left side of your screen, he was not the starter for the Browns against the Steelers. The Browns used him as a situational player in certain long yardage and passing situations. His whole goal right here, the way the game shaked out, was to go one-on-one -on -one against T.J. Watt, one of the best defensive players, maybe the best defensive player, maybe Garrett from the Browns has something to say about that, but easily one of the best defensive players in football. Again, this is one of the more incredible performances we've seen all season long for a guy to come in, not play the entire game, just to come in in certain situations against a top flight player. Let's start out with the pass protection one-on-one -on -one right here. Let's check out how Jones does. All right, you can see the snap right away. You can tell he's one-on-one. -on -one. The guard is sort of checking the gap right here. The center is looking to the, his right right there. So this is sort of a slide protection to the offense's right, the left side of your screen. You can see everyone's looking that way. But in terms of a little chip protection there from Ford, it's basically a one-on-one -on -one block. DeJuan Jones against T.J. Watt, one of the best players in football. And one of the things about getting a chip on the edge, I always felt playing tackle, that this is a tough situation to be in because it can throw up the timing, right? You're normally expecting a pass rusher to be a certain distance, a few steps after the snap. A chip can kind of screw up that timing and give the pass rusher an advantage. It kind of forces you as a blocker, if you're not patient, to get out of whack a little bit. But DeJuan Jones, Shows excellent patience. Look at that punch, folks. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's awesome stuff. Look at that timing. Weights, perfect extension right there. And right there, TJ Watt is done. I don't care how great of a player TJ Watt is, and he's a phenomenal player. But when you have a player like Jones with his size and strength, and first of all, look at that base, too. That's outstanding. Getting both hands right in your chest, locked down like that, you're done. You're eliminated. And I love the end of this right here. Immediately, you see TJ Watt. He's trying to go low in this situation, kind of turn the corner, maybe do a rip move. And Dewan Jones is a classic technique. They each tackles just take him to the ground right there pull him to the ground and then lay on top of him right there folks let me end on that right there that is a great position for dewan jones to be right on top of tj watt obviously you see dtr getting the ball off for an easy completion again all game long this was jones versus watt we'll show more plays like this later on jones rookie tj watt defensive player of the year kind of player jones was the clear winner i tell you what browns fans you got yourself a special player in this rookie from ohio state yeah, Nick, and Dewan Jones, I mean, really great effort there because I don't care who you are. You could be TJ Watt, and I'm sure TJ Watt is incredibly strong and an incredibly great pass rusher, but when you have almost 400 pounds on top of you, you're not going to do anything to the quarterback. So this is a great move there by Dewan Jones, and this is a great game for him. Limited snaps, like you said, situational almost. The TJ Watt stopper, he had 30 snaps this game, 25 of those were in pass blocking situations, and he had a 75.9 pass block grade. Very good, third highest of the season, which I think is incredible because he didn't have rhythm. He wasn't with the offensive line the whole game. He came in for spells at a time, and he still did so good. So very impressive performance. All right, going the other way now, there is Jones at right tackle. Of course, you can see the Steelers lined up at defensive lineman right there at a three technique. The whole goal here is, again, to isolate T.J. Watt. There he is right there on the end. And a wide nine technique far outside the defensive end and uh, far outside of the tight end, excuse me, and Joku, even though he's lined up as a slot receiver. Right now, they have this defensive lineman inside here to occupy the guard and potentially any center that may be looking over that direction as well. Again, the whole goal here is to isolate, to get your all-world, all-pro, one-on-one. This time, there is not going to be any help, and Joku gets right into his route right at the snap. It forces DeWan Jones to be one-on-one -on -one in space against TJ Watt. All right, you can see the snap. You can see the defensive lineman right there, the three technique, the tackle going into the guard. You can see the Steelers engaging the center. The whole goal here, right, is, of course, they want these interior guys to beat these guys and get pressure on the quarterback. But really, you're just trying to create this one-on-one -on -one matchup right here. T.J. Watt on the rookie, Dewan Jones. T.J. Watt with a running start. And this is a good strategy from T.J. Watt. See how he threatens him to the outside right there. And right here, T.J. Watt, instead of continuing with this outside rush, he's going to try and do a spin move inside, thinking, okay, you got Dewan Jones. 350, 400 pounds, whatever he's actually playing at. That's a lot of movement going backwards, trying to cut off the speed rush. I'm going to counter inside with a spin move. He's going to be out of whack, and I'm going to get a hit on the quarterback. But watch what Dewan Jones does here. When he gets into his pass set, TJ Watt does a spin move and immediately negates it. 
Oh my goodness, folks. Watch what he does with his hands right here. See how immediately he punches him with his hands in rapid fire again. I'm going to back that up right here. Watch it. See how he, he recognizes the spin's coming and immediately punches him with his hands and just negates the spin. That is fundamental classic offensive line technique. Quick adjustment with the hands. Stops the defensive end's momentum right there. Boom. TJ Watt's done. A couple quick punches to the back while he's doing the spin, deep in his base. He doesn't get a head over heels right here and completely eliminates TJ Watt. And then the end of it, just give him a shove for good measure. Look, we talked about it a second ago. He was not playing every snap. It's really hard to be an offensive lineman not playing in rhythm. It's very similar to any position, like a quarterback or something like that, where you have to get in the rhythm and flow of the game. But DeJuan Jones is that special kind of player who can just come off the bench in certain situations and be elite. And there's very few people that can do it, and there's almost no one that can do it against great players like TJ Watt. He has phenomenal technique. He's a great athlete in space in terms of pass protection, and of course, he's a big, strong dude. And Browns fans, I tell you what, he's the rare player where the more film you watch of him, the better he gets. Most players, the more film you watch, you see more weaknesses, you know, you see more things to improve on. I tell you what, the more I watch of Jones, the more my opinion of him goes up. He is that kind of player. Yeah, Nick, can you talk about Watt's plan here to get a hit on the quarterback? Well, let's look at the stats today from Jones. Zero sacks, zero hits allowed, zero hurries, zero pressures at all from Jones. Played phenomenal, 100% pass block efficiency, a PFF stat grading how well a guy is at negating pressure. He was 100% effective in today's game, going against some of the best pass rushers in the NFL from the Pittsburgh Steelers. This was absolutely top-tier stuff by Jones today, getting his pass game all the way up to the top, Nick. No hurries, no pressures whatsoever. Great, great game by Dewan Jones. All right, here we go again. Same song and dance, right? You've got Dewan Jones at right tackle. You've got T.J. Watt on defensive end, lined up across from him. Once again, the Steelers are trying to come up with a new way to isolate Watt one-on-one with Jones with no help. So they're going to line up this linebacker right here in the B-gap right here to threaten this guard and make the guard account for him. They've got a defensive lineman head up on the center right here, so the center is threatened in this direction. And they actually have defensive linemen and then an outside linebacker way over here again, threatening these two offensive linemen as well. So again, this is a situation with all the offensive linemen up front threatened that T.J. Watt knows he's going to be one-on-one with DeWan Jones right here in this matchup. And we've seen a few plays where Watt has tried to use an outside move and tried to use a counter spin move to the outside move, and DeWan Jones has handled it perfectly. Watt has a different strategy in terms of this pass rush, but the same result, a clear win for the Browns and DeWan Jones. Let's check out how it goes. All right, so you can see the center. He's got to step to that interior defensive lineman that was head up on him. You see the guard right there, Teller. He's looking at number 50 for Pittsburgh. Isolated. There you go, right there, Dewan Jones, TJ Watt. And TJ Watt right here is going to do a classic bull rush move. He's going to threaten Jones with a speed rush like we saw earlier, but instead of going with a spin move, he's going to then attack Dewan Jones right in the chest. This is a really effective pass rush move, especially if you're a great athlete like Watt who has good outside and inside moves. Because This is a chance to get a guy like Jones who's preparing for one of those moves, those counter moves, to get, catch him kind of flat-footed and drive him back into the quarterback. But watch what Jones does here. He sets out to him, right? TJ Watt right here. He's trying to transition into a bull rush move, but he freezes, right? So he has to go into like kind of a weird rip move, knocking hands down. This is not where TJ Watt wants to play, folks. This is a terrible rep from TJ Watt. And at first you say, oh, what, what's Watt doing, right? This is not something that he normally does. He's a great pass rusher. But because DeWan Jones doesn't do his normal kick step deep, instead he goes to him and closes the gap, it forces Watt to kind of just freeze in place right here. He's got like a deer in the headlights kind of look. He's like, I don't know what to do here. And he gets his hands right there. He tries to eventually work into his bull rush. But at that point, DeWan Jones immediately drops him into the ground a little bit there. And DTR has plenty of time to get the ball off. Again, phenomenal stuff. And here's the thing I love about DeWan Jones that really sets him apart. A lot of offensive tackles, they have a really good kick step in terms of they get depth in a vertical pass set when they're pass protecting. Some offensive tackles are really good at closing the gap with defensive players in a pass set like we see right here with DeJuan Jones. Jones can do both. Very few players can do both at a high level. I think that's what really sets him apart. Because right here, TJ Watt's whole strategy is like, okay, he's going to do a vertical pass set. That's going to allow me to get into my bull rush move, use the speed, the power. But right here, DeJuan Jones closes the gap so fast that TJ Watt's like, I, what do I do? I can't transition from speed to power. I don't have enough space to do that. He kind of flails with his hands. By the time he actually gets into a power position, DeJuan Jones immediately removes all of TJ Watt's power and again, puts him near the ground, nowhere near the quarterback. DeJuan Jones, folks, 
what he's able to do as a pass protector is crazy good stuff. The Browns, it, it's clear they got themselves a steal where they picked up DeWan Jones, but it's not that they got a good player. They got a great player. Again, he's going up against TJ Watt. It's almost like he is the TJ Watt stopper, in which case there's maybe two or three offensive tackles in the entire NFL that are TJ Watt stoppers. And usually those are guys who can only do it some of the game, not the entire game. DeWan Jones came into the game for the Browns to basically block TJ Watt, and he won basically every single rep. This is a special player that the Browns have in DeWan Jones. And Nick, let's talk about growth here for just a second. Let's scale all the way back to week two, the first time these teams met. In that game, Jones, one hit let up, four quarterback hurries let up, five total pressures, and two penalties. The only two penalties he committed all year against this Steelers team in week two. Fast forward to today, zeros across the board in the pressure department, as I alluded to, zero penalties as well. He's had no penalties all season, actually, since that game. A very clean game by Jones. And just, it's got to feel good for Jones to come into this game after having probably one of his toughest games of the year in week two versus Steelers and absolutely dominate. This is a stellar performance by Jones. And again, zero penalties, clean performance. He's becoming a heck of a player. All right, here we go. Going the other way now, there's Jones, of course, at right tackle. And this is late in the game. This is the game-winning drive the Browns had against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, of course, at this point, DeWan Jones is absolutely dominated T.J. Watt and everything the Steelers defense try to throw at him. He's had a great game. So the Steelers, of course, they're a smart team, a well-coached team. They try and cross up the Browns offense a little bit, and they just run a stunt inside right here. They work T.J. Watt inside right here to pick off the guard. They're thinking at this point that DeWan Jones has basically been coached to, hey, you go where T.J. Watt goes. If he goes outside, you go outside. If he goes inside, you go inside. And their whole point here is to get T.J. Watt attacking the tackle, I'm sorry, attacking the guard inside and having the Steelers' defensive tackle work outside, they're thinking that DeWan Jones at this point isn't smart enough or savvy enough to recognize that and pick it up, but he proves them wrong. Let's check out what Jones does here. All right, you can see T.J. Watt right there. He immediately takes one step outside and then fires inside right at the guard. Bang. Right here again, the Steelers are thinking that DeWan Jones is coached to just go with Watt wherever he goes, but watch what DeWan Jones does. He follows Watt inside, hands him off to the guard, and immediately picks up number 99 for Pittsburgh. Hands him off, picks him up, pours him up. Easy read for the quarterback, easy completion. Gets his hands down. That's the big thing, because in this situation, obviously the Browns did a lot of quick game with rookie DTR making his start. But here's the thing. Imagine if the Juan Jones doesn't come off on number 99 right there, and he comes around, he has a chance to get his hands up right here and bat the ball down. Instead, the Juan Jones gets his hands on him. You see right there at that moment, 99's hands goes down. The ball gets completed to David Njoku. Field goal range, Browns win the game. Again, obviously, this is a great rep from DeWan Jones, but this is just an example that the Steelers had no answers to what DeWan Jones was able to do to him. Again, the whole point of this stunt in this situation is that, look, we're going to throw TJ Watt inside and kind of eliminate him from this situation because we think DeWan Jones has just been coached to run right at Watt all game. Everything else doesn't matter. So we're going to bring 99 around and he's going to make a big play. But DeWan Jones proves him wrong. He's like, nope, I wasn't coached that. I know how to play in terms of picking up stunts just as good as blocking TJ Watt one on one. And he does it perfectly there. Again, big completion to Njoku. Browns go on to kick a field goal and win the game. He's a complete player, folks. He's not just great in one-on-one -on -one pass pro. He's not a one-trick pony. He can pick up stunts as well. His run game in terms of blocking needs some work, but he's good enough in terms of those situations. I tell you what, Browns fans, this is an awesome performance from Dewan Jones. And here's the best part. I think don't think this is a one-off. I think he could carry this the rest of the season and the rest of his career. All right, switching it up, we're going to go with a running play here. So this is a really Cool design by the Browns. Again, this is kind of a light box from the Pittsburgh Steelers. You can see only six people in the picture. Obviously, they got the free safety in the middle of the field right there. But I tell you what, in terms of people in the box, there's not that many people, only six bodies. And this is a great opportunity to run the football. Obviously, the Browns are really good at running. So they're basically going to get the tight end here one on one right there. We're going to get basically down blocks. It's going to be kind of a double team to the backside linebacker. You're going to get a back block here from the center. The guard's going to pull and kick out the end man on the line of scrimmage. You're going to have DeWan Jones in this situation. He's going to do what's called an anchor down. He's going to hear the B gap and then work out. And if TJ Watt, in this case, or anybody else tries to fly across his face, he's got to pick him up and kind of hold him in this area as long as possible. But folks, you can see where this hole is basically designed to operate, right? If you have Njoku working here, and you have the guard pulling here, working there, let me clean that up. And you have the guard pulling here. You can see a natural steal happening here. 
you got a double team action in natural steal happening here. So the running back's supposed to run right up here. You've got to hit this downhill if you're forward. I tell you what, Browns fans, this was almost a little bit of a missed opportunity, but it is a sign of other big plays to come for future games. Let's check out how this play goes. All right, so they don't double team this on the play side. I thought this would be a good opportunity for a double team. They say left tackle, you've got this one on one. They send the left guard right over to the backside linebacker. I think if this defensive tackle would have fired more inside, it would have acted like a double team. But regardless, it's the same scheme in terms of how they block it on the play side. You can see Njoku work up to the next level. You can see Teller pulling. And folks, you can see this hole. Let me pause it right there. This is a great hold, folks. This is probably a touchdown. You've got Dewan Jones here. This is a tough situation because TJ Watt's going to fire across his face. In this situation, you want to hold him up and get some vertical movement here as much as you can. That's exactly what he does, right? Holds him up, doesn't hold him, doesn't tug him, doesn't give the referee an excuse to throw a flag, squares him up enough, does just enough work right there. Clearly, TJ Watt's not going to make that play. But folks, I don't like to freeze frame running backs in terms of what plays could have happened because it's really hard to see the hole. But in terms of what this play was designed to do, again, it's pretty clear in between the left tackle and the tight end and the pulling guard, this is where the hole is going to go. Folks, watch forward here. If you run through here, this is a touchdown. And we don't have to worry about kicking a game-winning field goal at the end of the game. But watch what he does. He, like, stops. Again, I'll go back to the very beginning. Gets the handoff. Pit, pitter, patter. Oh, my gosh, folks. You cannot block this any better up front and do a worse job running up front. And look, Ford's a good player. I really like him, right? But, oh, my gosh. This is just wasting good blocking up front. Because right here, if he just sprints, I mean, this is a touchdown. There's nobody there. And he just slows down, pitter patters his speed, ends up being only a few yards on the ground. When I saw this play, I was like, man, what a wasted opportunity. But I tell you what, the one thing to like about it, Browns fans, and again, this is why I think even with Watson out for the rest of the season, you guys are going to have a chance. You can block everything up front. Obviously, Dewan Jones winning once again on TJ Watt, doing just enough. Everybody else doing a really nice job up front as well. I tell you what, you got running backs being a little bit more assertive. Again, if that's Nick Chubb, again, another brutal injury, that's easily a touchdown. But I tell you what, up front, the Browns are playing at a really high level. Yeah, Nick, and we talk about all game, how good Dewan Jones has been. He's been great. He's been phenomenal. Let's take a step back, and I want to hit you with one more stat here. Let's look at TJ Watt's grade today. This was his worst graded game of the season, a 69.4 PFF grade for TJ Watt. He's always in the 80s, high 70s, 80s, sometimes getting up into the 90s. This guy is 69.4. He was absolutely dominated by Dewan Jones and had his worst performance of the season. So you might think, okay, on paper, Dewan Jones looks good, but maybe we're not seeing the whole picture. No, you look at the grade for TJ Watt as well. He had his worst game of the season when he had to go up against Dewan Jones. I think that's proof in the pudding that Dewan Jones played absolutely phenomenal and he shut down TJ Watt today. All right, just to add an exclamation point on your comments about shutting down TJ Watt, there's Dewan Jones. There's TJ Watt, folks. This is, again, one-on-one -on -one pass rush. TJ Watt's just doing an old-school speed rush here. We talk about Dewan Jones shutting down TJ Watt. TJ Watt having his worst day of the season against Jones. This is just another phenomenal example of this. Let's check out how Jones, once again, has a massive victory against TJ Watt. Because you can see the pass set right there. Again, he is very aggressive. He closes the space between himself and the edge rusher when he has this kind of pass set very quickly, very athletically. He also has a really good vertical set that we've highlighted as well. But I love his hands, right? Look at that hands. Look, at, I tell you what, one of the things you hear about all the time is defensive ends, edge rushers, they try and knock down offensive linemen's hands. But Dewan Jones has this incredible ability to knock down the attempted knockdown, right? You can see TJ Watt right here. He's trying to knock down hands, and Dewan Jones wipes away TJ Watt's hands and then immediately replaces right there. Oh my goodness, that's great stuff. Again, because you're in a speed rush, if you're a defensive end, if you're an edge rusher, you want to knock down the hands, get into the shoulder, and rip through and get on the outside of the offensive tackle. But Dewan Jones knocks down TJ Watt's hands, immediately replaces, and then drives him upfield and throws him behind the quarterback. Phenomenal stuff. Again, this kind of performance here from TJ Watt. This is something you'd see from maybe a, a second string or third string pass rush or something like this, especially one-on-one -on, -one on a rookie. Maybe you see this in a preseason game with a guy who's about to get cut, a rep like this from TJ Watt. But again, this is TJ Watt, right? This is one of the best players in the entire NFL. DeWan Jones, his performance, his technique, his athleticism, his overall skill turns TJ Watt, a defensive player of the year candidate, into a third string pass rusher.